What's up, YouTube? How's it going? Hope you're all doing well. Uh, welcome to my new studio, sort of. Uh, I'm still setting it up. So back in March, I decided to shoot a spec ad for the company Ember with a couple good friends of mine. Jessica Ross, who's a wedding photographer here in Dallas, and Nigel Bajos, who is a YouTuber, was here in Dallas, but just moved back to Oregon. The reason I wanted to do this spec ad was just to show what my company can do for others and the type of quality that can be expected when you hire my production company. I feel like spec ad is a really great way to kind of go all out and have a lot of fun and not have any client breathing down your neck and just kind of show people what you can do without any creative limits. So we set the date, we got location scouting done, we did the production, and today I wanted to break down the entire production process, just the, showing a bunch of BTS and talking about some of the problems that we faced when we got to set and uh, just some of the things that you should think about when you decide to shoot an ad. Now we did shoot this all on the Panasonic Lumix GH6 in 5.7K ProRes. It was a beast. And I wanted to try out the recording uh, to an SSD through USB-C. So we did do that. Now I do have CF Express cards and I would have been fine using them, but I wanted to see what the like recording to an SSD was like. So with that, sit back, relax and enjoy. We're here at location, um, got everything packed up in the back and about to start unloading. So I'm waiting for uh, the AC, my AC to show up and to kind of help me come unload and just start getting things ready to go. But yeah, so I think it's gonna be a good day. I think we're gonna have fun. Yeah, I don't know how to vlog. So for the first shot, we wanted her walking to pick up the kettle, grabbing the mug, and then pouring coffee into it. And we wanted to push in, so we broke out the manual slider that I have, and we put the GH6 rig onto it. We had the exposure set for the windows on the GH6, slightly overexposed a bit. We had a Godox VL150 blasting into the ceiling, close to the camera, but far enough away that it allowed for a good fill. And then we had the small rig 120D doing the exact same, but on the opposite side of the room, hidden by the fridge. The point of this was to fill out the room with what could be perceived as natural light. And we did add some fill light and bounce just to help bring up the talent in the mug. This was a pretty easy shot and it allowed us to actually move quickly into our next shot, which was the hero shot of the mug, which we ended on. So the way that we did this is we kept the lighting basically the same. And then we put the ML60 with the diffusion closer to the mug to add some fill light into it because it was black it was kind of hard to see so he added some of that and added some bounce from the front and then that was kind of all we needed to do was to help remove some of the shadows and then for here it was just a simple push in on the mug with it in the left third so we could add some text or logo because i knew this was going to be the final shot and we kind of did a push up so we had the camera kind of start a little low and push up into it to give it this hero look to show off that it was kind of like the hero. And again, it was just a pretty easy shot. I think the hardest thing to do was to pull focus while also pushing in on the slider. You know, normally I would hire an AC to pull focus, but because this was all self-funded, it didn't really work that way. Moving on to the second location of this shoot, it was actually the uh, office space or like a dining room space. Here, it was just simple. We wanted to show her walking into the frame, setting down the mug, changing the temperature because that's kind of the biggest selling point is that it's Bluetooth temperature controlled and then show the time passing and show a notification kind of coming, coming up on the phone uh, to signify that, hey, look, it's reached the right temperature and in all honesty the lighting was very similar to what we did for the first few shots we blasted both the godox vl150 and the small rig rc120d straight into the ceiling and we had the curtains open for some of these shots so that we could have a little bit more light come in as ambient light and motivated side light and so that kind of made it look like it was literally being naturally lit by the uh, daylight, which it was obviously not. 
And then we had the like ML60 with that diffusion kind of adding a little bit of front light onto her from that side just to kind of sell that look. And so this just gave it a really nice ambience like it was naturally lit, but obviously it was not naturally lit. So the first shot, there was no camera movement specifically. We just had it on a tripod and that was kind of it. And then from that shot, we actually moved straight to our time-lapse moving in time kind of shot. And here we actually used the photo time-lapse mode to create this. We set it to every three seconds and I think we did a one or two second shutter as well. This gave us that blow, blurry trail movement as she's, though she's like moving super fast. But what was awesome is that it kind of kept the computer and the other stuff in place. And it just was the same lighting as the whole commercial so far. And then we went into the tight shots of the phone with the Ember app. This was a bit more difficult because the notification wasn't popping up how I was expecting it to. So after a bit of thinking over things and trying some stuff my good friend and fellow youtuber nigel had the great idea to start on the ember screen with the temperature at the correct temperature and then let the screen kind of go dark and basically reverse that in editing and then speed ramp it, it kind of just perfectly went into it and then in the final edit i just animated a notification pop-up that just worked really well so that kind of fixed the issue we were having with that i wanted the phone to pop up as though when like the notification happens but it just didn't work like that so we just worked with the problems we had and and did what we could but then we also shot some close-up shots of just her grabbing the phone changing the temperature um, setting it to the temperature she wanted and the hardest part with this was just the lighting that we had kind of gave us a glare on the phone so what we did was we actually closed the curtains and took off the ml60 and the bounce and we just used the ceiling fill light and then this kind it just helped us negate those reflections and so we ended up just getting the shot that we needed or all of the shots that we needed even though we had to kind of work with the setbacks and change things up on the fly and then we ended with a couple gimbal shots we started with the one that was going to be used earlier in the ad and this was a little bit trickier to light because we were moving so we were in we were seeing parts of the frame that we originally weren't when we were shooting on the slider so we kind of had to just go with the blasting of the light in the ceiling and then from there when we're pointed at the mug that ground wasn't lit how i wanted it to be lit and i knew it was going to be naturally darker just because there were going to be things in the way but it wasn't lit enough so what I did was I just used a depth map tool in DaVinci Resolve and I brought up the overall exposure down there and it it did just enough. I think it sold the effect. So I was pretty happy with that. But we basically just started on her pouring the cup and pulling up and walking away and blowing on the mug and just following her to the office. And this was the connecting shot from picking up the coffee from that first wide shot to moving into the office. And then the second slash third gimbal shots were basically just one was following her into the kitchen from her in the desk or the you know dining room table, following her into the tra kitchen, transitioning by going past the wall. And then on the second one, we started in the wall and opened up to her washing the dishes so the cool thing about this dishwashing one was we used the sure a100b boomed above her head kind of acting as though there was a light above her head allowing her to see the dishes and it gave us this beautiful like overall light on the sink which was awesome because when you're washing the the, the cup, it, you could see that perfectly and it kind of gave her a little bit of a hair light. And then we just had the small rig and the Godox blasting straight into the ceiling to light up the background. I did have to do another depth map here to uh, light up the background a bit more because I just, it wasn't light enough because again, we lost some light, uh, but overall it was really great so overall we had a lot of fun doing this shoot i couldn't imagine a better crew and more fun than we would had and i think that you know we kept it as simple as possible so that we could get through these things really quick i did want to do some other shots but we never got around to doing them and that's okay if i'd had the budget you know we would have done that but 
we didn't have the budget. So thankfully we were able to get everything done that we needed to get done and that was a wrap. All right, that's a wrap. We are all packed up, good to go, ready to go home. Um, that was awesome. I hope you guys all learned something from this. Um, I know it's probably sporadic um, and it may seem like there's no point, but what I wanted to show was kind of the actual production process and some of the problems, some of the things that you come run into, and then like how to light stuff as well. I think that's important to know. You saw a lot of the time we just bounced light off the, the ceiling. Like that's what we did because we wanted to create an, amb like an ambiance of like daylight filled room but we needed to control it which is why we turned off all the lights and everything so hope you guys learned something from this i'm not the best teacher but i just figured if people come along they can kind of see what we're doing and, and how we're doing things and you know learn from that this was just a spec ad so both nigel uh who's a youtuber and i'll post this youtube and my friend Jessica, who uh, she is a full-time wedding photographer, couples photographer, all that. Both of them graciously donated their time and their talent to me. And I really appreciate all of that. Um, I couldn't have done it without them. And I think that like, ultimately, this is what friendships are for. This is what relationships are for. And this is why you build relationships because people are so, if, if, you, if you're a good person and they like you, people are willing to help you out. And that's the most important thing is finding that support group. Um, so big shout out to Jessica and Nigel. Uh, they are both phenomenal human beings and I couldn't have done this without them. I think that's all. If not, you'll see me when I'm editing, so. If you like this video, please hit that like button. If you want to subscribe to see more of this kind of content, I kind of want to do more of this style um, of like you know interactive teaching, uh, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I post another video. I just realized I've been looking at this screen the entire time. Um, I'm not used to this uh, at all, so I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please post them in the, qu uh, the comment section below. Um, you know, if you have specifically uh, production related questions, um, you know, post those below and I'll try to answer them in either like, you know, Instagram uh, reels, YouTube shorts, or um, an actual YouTube video. And uh, we'll go from there. So with that, hope you have a great day. You stay safe. Designed for home or office, the Ember Mug does more than simply keep your coffee hot. Whether you're drinking coffee or tea, the temperature will be perfect from the first sip to the last drop. With our easy to use app, you can set the perfect temperature for all day enjoyment. With Ember, your drink stays hot for hours so you can stay focused on your work. All Ember mugs are safe to hand wash and submersible up to one meter in water. mug also comes with a convenient charger coaster so that your mug is always ready when you are. Ember. Perfect temperature every time.